my experience with online dating, <laughs> which fortunately right. culminated in a wonderful um, individual mm -hmm. who happens to be here right now. But um, yeah. um, it wasn't like that for about six months. <laughs> um, and it was like... It was more like this, right? Yes, it was more like this. And I actually have a <laughs> saved folder of images on my phone of crazy profiles. So I just, at one point, I was like getting super frustrated and I'm like, this is ridiculous. I am like not going to be like, this is why I'm even bothering with this. And just, I was getting so frustrated. And I wasn't even going out with a lot of these people. I just was like talking to them and just being like, no, no, skip, skip, skip. And, um, and I saved a lot of the profiles because at one point I was like, you know what? I'm not going to get pissed anymore. I'm just going to be like wildly entertained. And if something happens, great, but if it doesn't, at least I was entertained, right? Right, right, right. So this is kind of a spoof on the best of Bumble, because obviously it wasn't the best of Bumble. It was like, <laughs> if there, so there were these, these people that were like, would like pose with like face masks on to kind of tell me that they were being safe during COVID, but then they would be like half naked or <laughs> um, send me like inappropriate pictures. And it was just like, it was like, a, it was crazy. People were making up their names. Um, they were living in other countries and where they said they lived. Um, it, it was just like, yeah. And I think also the timing of it too was like a lot of people had been isolated in their houses for a long time, right? So they were like desperate to like express themselves and get out in the world. So there was a lot of that going on too, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so, but yeah, I mean, I think that piece is really funny. Yeah. And, and I sort of went overboard with the mask, you know, because like mm. the whole thing with COVID was like, you know, people would be like, oh, well, my eyes are smiling at you, you know, mm -hmm. like, I, I can't see you, but my eyes are smiling at you. So it was like, I just like, I, when my friend gave me this doll head, I was like, that's the top of my nose. <laughs> and I put it on and I'm like, it's just so perfect, I think, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. And then, um, so the sort of oversized appendage <laughs> that says I want you on it was on from another doll actually huh. that wasn't working. I think it might have been part of the other doll that I was talking about earlier that didn't work. Mm -hmm. um, so I ripped it off and it said I want you around on it already. Um, but it was like a leg I think. I don't think it was a penis at the time. <laughs> it was a leg. So I was just like Anyway, it was just like perfect for that doll. Right, right, right. So, well, um, uh, it, this this is the only explicitly quote unquote male doll in the show. Yeah. Right? So, can you speak to that? Why is why? Um, I that? wasn't gonna put it in actually mm. because of that, but then I was like, no, I gotta put this in. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah. So why why majority quote unquote female dolls? Yeah. I mean, I was playing around with that title at the beginning, like one guy, and <laughs> like <laughs> seventeen, but sixteen women or something. I don't know. Like, but then I was like, no, it's not really about that. It's not really about sexuality, even though it's in the show. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, I just feel like sexuality is part of uniqueness, right? Like who we are as individuals. Like it's part of who we are. It's a major part of who mm -hmm. we are. Mm -hmm. um, well, do you want to move on to what I, what I, what I call the, the mother doll? You know, we have the, uh, I had a baby at 51. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, let's pan around to here. Um, you can I see. also want to mention two other influences that were oh, yeah. Come on big for me during the show. One was Paul Clay's dolls. Oh, I mean, I always think oh, them. They're okay. amazing. And I was following a couple different doll artists also along with a million other but one of the things I was looking at a lot was this amazing Facebook page called Gorilla Sewing mm. that is all sort of alternative ways of dealing with fabric based textile sculpture art like not it's really awesome because a lot of times people think textiles and they think quilting or like sort of crafty things mm -hmm. um, not that quilting isn't an art form but like more craft based um, so it didn't really, doesn't really elevate it to like an art form on the, on the level of sculpture or painting. Um, so anyway, this page was like amazing. Mm. I highly recommend it if you're interested in that. Sure. Gorilla Snowy. So, okay. 
baby. I had a baby at 51. I did not have a baby at 51. <laughs> so this is this, I am 51, but I This is the, the largest and I feel like the, the matriarch of the show, right? She's the last one I completed too. I had like an all-nighter, I think two nights before I dropped my work off. Oh my goodness. And she appeared to me at like dawn. Mm -hmm. And my studio has two windows that overlook the creek. And it was really beautiful. Mm -hmm. I will never forget that experience of mm -hmm. creating her and watching the sun come up. Oh, she boy. finally came together. Mm -hmm. So, she, uh, oops, I don't need these anymore. Put them down. Um, so something very like Madonna-like about mm -hmm. her to me. Yeah. Is it the veil on top of her? It might, it might be. Yeah. Yeah. And just like the, you know, I'm imagining the, uh, the Pieta, you know, like this is like, you know, and this is sort of like the, the Jesus, you know, yeah. the, the form over the, the lap, you know, for some, yeah. I don't know why that came to mind. But, well, but. I mean, I think that that, you know, I grew up Catholic too, so I think that that kind of imagery comes into my work sometimes, so it's very possible that, yeah. you know, um, and also, I love that actually. Hello. Um, hello. I keep uh, <laughs> I keep moving out of the camera. Yeah. So I'm still talking. Yeah. Be with the work. Yes. <laughs> okay. So this is the star of the show, I think. Right. For me, and also. Yeah, it's so striking uh, a piece, and the form. So, like, how did that? Uh, how did this uh, the structure come together for you? So um, I started with the head. Just the head. It mm. was just a head that was like to the muslin sort of fabric here. And I had like patched it heavily. She did not have her lace piece on her ears yet. So her ears have wire in them. Um, <laughs> anyway, they, they do bend, but I, I, I like their attempts to wire. I like really like that because <laughs> they worked. But so her head was in a, was the beginning, and the kind of really heavy embroidery that happened uh, at the sort of third eye imagery up here, which mm. is very spiritual yeah. and meditative. Well, there it is. The third eye. So maybe that's also the sort of holy yeah. quality that you're seeing mm -hmm, in it. Mm -hmm. um, that, must, that must have been it. Yeah. I didn't even know, I didn't perceive that as a third eye, but that's maybe unconsciously. Yeah, I mean, it's not. Unconsciously I did, I guess. Yeah, yes, exactly, maybe. So, um, and then there's like a lot of like sort of heavy stitching going on over her mouth, and that all happened uh, later. So I had sort of her head done, like kind of a rough idea of her head and her ears were done. And then I had this, um, Okay, so a friend of mine gave me this gas wire tubing, mm -hmm. which is the frame in here. It's like this heavy plastic tube that's bendable. Mm -hmm. So I made this casing for the tube, and then I attached it to the head. And I was bending it every which way, trying to figure out how the hell I was going to present this piece. To the night before, or two nights before I dropped off the piece. I was like, this is, I wasn't going to put it in for a while. <laughs> I just did not know how it was going to work. And then at one point I had this, this, so, so in other words, the dress and the shoes and this whole middle part was not there mm -hmm. until later. And neither was her veil piece. Mm -hmm. The veil was the last thing I put on. So the, um, so I, so I was sort of like, I had it like standing straight up. I thought, okay, I just make this sculpture in the middle of the room where the wire is straight up and the head is kind of bobbing on it. And I was like, it doesn't make sense. Like, it's not, why am I making this long tube? What's happening? Like, there's some reason for this. So I started playing with it and I started bending it into a circle. Um, and so I had it as a circle. And so this is all bent here. Like, this, this whole thing is that sort of tubing. And I, I had it bent and I had the head on it and I had it attached to the wall without this kind of dress. It's just kind of this neck thing here. Can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. so this kind of neck thing with the round part. And I thought, mm -hmm. and I keep in mind, it didn't have this on it either. Um, and then I thought, it, it was like two different parts. It was like the head and then this white in the body. And I don't know, I was, I glanced over at my studio table off to 
to the side, a small table that I had a bunch of doll cost, like, out, uh, clothing on, and I saw this dress. Mm. It was like the same exact color. Mm. Mm. It was just one of those synchronistic moments of stuff that I collected that I wanted to use, but um, didn't know when I was going to use it. And it was just like, I was like, oh my god, look at this dress with this thing. This is working great. So I attached the dress, I put like the pin on her, so I can stitch each butterfly pin. And it started to look like this weird, sweet little baby thing. It's a creature. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, the, the cream and was just not working with the rest of the piece because it was like the shoes weren't there yet, right? So it was like the cream and the head and there's something about the draping and I found I'm like she needs something on her like something on her head that was in balance so I found this lace collar in a box of special pieces that I had and I draped it on her head and that's that's when it, I think I had put the shoes on already right, right. but actually I put the shoes on and then I was like there's something still not right and I put the collar on and that's when the sun came up and I was like oh my god <laughs> I was so excited right so yeah, and then I was like, "How the hell are we going to install this?" And I, so I was like, "Right, like a whole a nother, like a whole nother thing, pictures. right?" Yeah, because it, it has to. So there's a hook on the back of her head, but then also these pieces here had to be in just the right place with like supports here, so that the hoop would be around her body, because it started to look like a wound or some kind of like weird umbilical cord or something. Mm -hmm. And um, that's how I tied the title in. I was like, okay, I had, and also creating dolls. I've never had children. And I, I don't know, like creating these personalities, it's almost like you're creating your little family or something mm -hmm. in a very different way, your art, but, um, and so it just, you know, here was this giant, like doll, and I, it just struck me that, mm. um, you know, then I, I was reminded that, you know, babies don't exactly look like that unless you have them at 51, maybe, and it's too late to have a baby, and you have some weird stuff going on with bunny ears, <laughs> um, full mouth of teeth, um, anyway, yeah. so, yeah, that was really cool to talk about the process of that, and my friend had given me those bunch of doll shoes and I was like those are so perfect because they're like very vintage they're like 70s like I had movies like that when I was a kid mm -hmm. so I was like this is awesome and then, and then I had I had some interesting reactions to it like that it was like folk like very folk arty I think it's very different from the other pieces in the show indeed yeah. the colors are very different um also I wanted to talk about a little bit about the washes so this her head was muslin and I painted it pink mm -hmm. and that was really interesting too to sort of like wet the muslin with like watered down paint mm -hmm. and I did that in a couple of the pieces like Best of Bumble has that too where there's like sort of that has an e sort of an even wash um, but this fabric here this this muslin is all like vintage muslin that I found it's like everything from like tea towels to pillowcases, it's all vintage linens, mm -hmm. and um, there's so many of them around, and like, it just was wonderful to be able to use them in my art, because I was sitting around, it's like a, some of the pieces, I like, like this one, for example, I actually lit some of them on fire, not completely, <laughs> but parts of them, like this one, you can see her lip is burned, mm -hmm. can you see that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I had like matches in my, which is actually very, um, it's kind of risky behavior for me, especially because I have that fire. But um, I was just really like, I don't know, I wanted to like, there was something about, like there's sort of like a history in them for me in right. a way, because 